In Terraform, you have variables and you have local values, but what's the difference and why would you use local values instead of variables? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's Terraform Tuesday. <music> Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today, we're going to be adding another installment to the Terraform basics, this time talking about local values. What are they, and why would you use them, and how are they different than something like input variables or other constructs you have in Terraform? That's what we're going to cover today. Before I get into that, I just have like two quick things that I want to mention. Number one, if you're interested in sponsoring these Terraform Tuesday videos, I am open to sponsorships. So if you're a vendor that has a super cool tool that integrates with Terraform and you want me to showcase that, hey, let's talk. I could do a whole Terraform Tuesday about your awesome product. Let's do that. That. The second thing that I want to mention is that Pluralsight just went to the Author Summit last week, and I got to say there's some cool new stuff coming to Pluralsight. If you're enjoying these Terraform basics, then I encourage you to check out my Terraform Getting Started course, where which kind of picks up where the Terraform basics leaves off and gets you really on the ground and running with Terraform. So those are two quick things. Links are down in the description. With no further ado, let's talk about local values. Local values, also sometimes just called locals in the world of Terraform, are values that are internal to your Terraform configuration. And I think the best way I could explain them is by making a couple analogies. Now, if you come from more of a software development background, you're used to declaring variables inside your code. That's kind of what local values are. It's a way to declare a value that you want to reference multiple times throughout your configuration. It's, it's a placeholder, if you will. So if you come from the software development background, that probably makes sense to you. If you come from an infrastructure, infrastructure as code background, if you've ever used ARM templates, they have a construct called variables in them, which are local values that you use inside of the ARM template. Input values are almost exactly the same thing. So if you're coming from the ARM template world, thumbs up, you already know what I'm talking about. If you're coming from CloudFormation, it's not really a direct analogy, which is one of the shortcomings of CloudFormation templates, but that, well, <laughs> I'm not gonna go and rant about that for the next five minutes, so let's just move on. How are local values different from input variables, which I have covered in a previous Terraform Basics video? The main difference is, Input variables are values that you submit to the Terraform configuration at runtime. You can have default values in your variables, but generally speaking, you're going to submit some values to Terraform when it runs, and that's the input into the black box that is your configuration. Local values are calculated inside of the configuration. Now, they may use variables as a basis for their value, but you don't actually directly send information to those local values to configure them. So that's the big difference between input variables and local values. Input variables are an input to your configuration. Local values are calculated internally in that configuration, and they're also only available within that configuration, within that root module. If you define locals in a child module, or there are locals defined in a module that you import from somewhere, those local values are not available to the root module. They are scoped just to their module. And likewise, any local values you define inside your root module are not going to be directly accessible to child modules. You have to pass them as a variable. Again, local values, they're just internal. Now let's talk about some of the use cases, why you would actually go about using local values. Now that we have a firm grasp on what local values are, why would you use the things? What's the point? Well, the main point is they are a placeholder. <laughs> They're something that you can refer to throughout your configuration and make your life a little bit easier. So that's the main reason to use them. And let me give two quick examples of how you might take advantage of local values. One could be if you want to set consistent metadata tags throughout your entire configuration for resources. Well, you can do that. You can create a local value that's a map of tags 
and then refer to that local value in all the resources that need tags. And then, this is the good part, if you need to update those tags, you update it in one place. You don't have to go through all the different resources and add tags, you just update it in one place and boom, you're done. So that's a great example of how you might use local values. Another common use that I've seen is if you want to create names for all the different resources in your configuration, local values is a place you can do that. You can set up a prefix that you submit through a variable and then append to that prefix whatever name you want for your network or your instances or your containers, whatever it is. But you can have all that naming stored in a locals block and you can go back to that locals block and update it whenever you need to. So if you want consistent naming and you wanna be able to see that naming easily, a locals block is, well, it's a good way to do it. Now there's a third reason you might use locals and that's for testing. Now, if you remember, I've talked about Terraform console before. Terraform console loads the Terraform configuration of the directory you run it from. And assuming you've initialized Terraform and maybe even run a plan and apply, it will pull in the variable values you used, the local values you used, and all the attributes of your resources and data sources. And then you can test out things like, how will this function evaluate? How will this syntax evaluate? So if you want to test a particular function in Terraform, just adding some local values to your configuration and then run ter running Terraform console is a great way to do that. It's a nice shortcut when you want to test syntax or see how a function evaluates. So those are some of the use cases for local values. Now let's talk a little bit about the syntax of local values. The syntax for declaring locals is very straightforward. You just use the locals keyword and then curly braces to create a block. And that's, that's pretty much it. Within that block, you put key value pairs. The key is going to be the name of the local value, the way in which you refer to it. And then the value can be whatever you want it to be. You're not constrained to just the basic data types like num and Boolean and string, you can also create more complex data types. It could be a list, it could be a map, a set, a custom object, whatever you want it to be. You're also not constrained to just using values from variables or other local values. You can refer to resources, data sources, or even module outputs in the remainder of your configuration to construct these local values. So there are a lot of options there for what values you can create in your local values. You're also not limited to a single locals block within your configuration. You can declare multiple locals blocks in different files as long as they're all in the same directory, they'll all be part of the same configuration. And yes, one local value can refer to another, so you're not constrained in that way either. So locals do give you a lot of flexibility, which begs the question, what's the best way to organize your locals within your Terraform configuration. We'll get to that in a moment. The last thing I wanna mention is how you refer to a value when you're using locals. The way that you do it, and you might think it's locals.something, but it's actually the name, which is the key of the key value pair within your locals block. And then if it's a more complex object, object type, you can use standard Terraform syntax to expand on that object. So if you have a list, you could use the square brackets and then put in a number to get a certain item or element out of that list. So that's how you refer to a local value in the rest of your configuration. Now let's talk a little bit about where to place your locals blocks when it comes to your configuration. I've seen roughly three different approaches when it comes to locals blocks. The most common one that I see is just creating a file called locals.tf or putting the locals block in your variables.tf file and just defining all of your locals there. Everything just goes in that one spot. Now that's great if you're trying to find a locals value to change it, you know, hey, they're all in that one block. They're not anywhere else. Another pattern I've seen is locating the locals block in the same file as the resources that are going to reference it. So if you have a bunch of locals values that are going to be used for networking, let's say, and you have a networking.tf file, you might put a locals block in there with all of those locals values, which means you don't have to go into a different file to find and manipulate those values. So there's definitely, there's value in doing that. 
I've also seen the third one, which is a hybrid approach. When you have global local values, I'll call them, they're not global in the sense that you can refer to them outside of the configuration, but global in the sense that you have a bunch of different files referencing that same value, then putting it in a dedicated location makes sense. And then for more local values, local, local values <laughs> that only refer to a subset of resources that are in a single file, then have a locals block there. I would say regardless of the approach that you take, probably put that in a readme or in comments for your Terraform configuration. So you and people who work on that code will know where to go to find those locals values. I mean, sure, they can search for it in the code, but wouldn't it be much easier if you just kind of knew where all that information was stored? So that's my advice when it comes to placement of your local blocks. Now let's go over to Visual Studio Code and do a little demo on actually using local values, and I can show you how I might use them in a configuration. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio Code, and I'm working in the directory 2021-0928 local values. If you're looking for these files, you can always find them on my GitHub. The link should be on the screen right now, and you can also find it in the description for the video if you wanted to follow along or just play around on your own. I've got two directories in here. One is the syntax directory, and the other one is multiple files. So let's take a look at the syntax first just so you can see again, kind of what the syntax looks like for locals. So this is a very simple locals block. I have it all defined in a single file here. And I have a couple different examples here. The first one shell equals crunchy and soft. It, the value is a list type. The next one is tags. And this would be an example of setting metadata tags for everything. And in that case for the tags, I am creating a type map for the value. So you can see different objects. And then the last one, meaning of life, I'm constructing a value from another locals value. So you can see in the expression, I'm referring to local.tags. And because tags is a map, I can specify which key value I want out of that map. So I can say number. And if we look at the map, we can see that number will refer to 42. Now, remember I said that I can load up Terraform console to evaluate some of these local values. So let's go into this directory and we'll run a Terraform init. Quick reminder, you have to run a Terraform init before you go into Terraform console so it can load everything, especially modules and providers. I'm not using any of those in this, but otherwise it would need to load those things and prepare the state. So now we can go into Terraform console and if I want to check the value of a particular locals, I can just do local dot and then the name of the local value that I want to refer to. And we can see it returns back the value of local dot shell. If I want to go one deeper and test how I would refer to something in my tags, I could do that by adding a square bracket here and say item. And there we go it returns back the value from my map. And I could use a bunch of different Terraform functions to do further testing with these local values if I was curious about how a particular function works, maybe a sort function or something that manipulates strings, this would be a good way to test those functions out. Okay, so let's get out of here and we'll go up to the multiple files directory and let's take a look at what's going on in there. Now, remember I said you can organize your locals in different ways. So let's say I have some of my locals defined in a locals.tf. And in my locals.tf, I am creating a prefix for naming that is based off of a naming prefix I get from a variable and a random ID that I'm generating within this configuration. This can be a good way to have, you know, somewhat globally unique values, especially when they have to be unique in the larger context. Let's say you're creating an Azure storage account or an S3 bucket. Those have to be globally, globally unique. This could be a way to generate that. This prefix is going to be used by potentially a bunch of resources in my configuration. So I'm defining it in my locals.tf. Now, if we go down to something like vnet.tf, and scroll up here, 
I have a different locals block set up, and this is for use by my virtual networking. So in here, I can define some VNet info, the name of the VNet I wanna create and its address space. And then I can also create a list of subnets I want to be generated inside that VNet with values that correspond to it. And I could do some calculation here using the site or subnet function, but in this case, I'm keeping it pretty static and pretty simple. So I have all these different values here, and then if we scroll down to the network module where I want to use these local values, you can see I'm referring to the VNet name by doing local.vnetinfo.name. Even though it's a map, I can refer to it using the dot syntax or the square bracket syntax. So I went with the dot syntax on this one. And then to get my list of subnet prefixes, I can use the splat expression, local.subnets.splat.address, and that will actually return a list of all of the address values from each entry in my subnets list of maps. So that's really a very convenient way to organize information and keep it separate from the module configuration, but it's all in the same file, so I can change things around if I wanted to. So for instance, if I go back into Terraform console, and I've already initialized this, so we don't have to worry about that. And from Terraform console, I just wanna test an expression to make sure it evaluates properly. So let's do local.subnets.star.address. We can see it returns a list of the subnet addresses. So I know ahead of time, this is going to evaluate properly to a list, and then I won't run into syntax errors or misconfigured stuff when I actually try to run the plan and apply for my Terraform configuration. So those are two examples of how you can use locals and organize local values within your Terraform configurations. Okay, to summarize, in this video, we saw that local values are different than input variables. Local values are defined inside of a Terraform configuration. They're computed inside that configuration, and you can draw on a bunch of different sources for information to compose your local values. We also saw that local values can be specified multiple times in different files within your configuration. And finally, we know that those local values are only available within the scope of a particular module. You can't refer to locals outside the scope of that module. So hopefully those are some important and useful takeaways for you. All right, that's gonna do it for me for today. Just a couple quick things as we wrap up. Number one, I wanna remind you that I have shut down my Patreon. It just wasn't making a whole lot of sense. If you wanna know more, check out my daily check-in podcast where I talked about what happened with the Patreon and why I decided to shut it down. The other thing that I want to mention is one of the benefits of being a patron was you got a weekly newsletter. And I'm going to continue doing that weekly newsletter. It's just gonna be posted on my website as opposed to being sent to you. And I'm working on making an email version of that that you could sign up for. So keep your eyes peeled for that if that's of interest to you. In it, I talk about what I have posted in the last week, podcasts, interesting articles I've found, and a little, you know, a few personal tidbits in case you care about that sort of thing. Like I said, that's going to do it for me for today. I want to say thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the content and want to keep more coming your way. You can hit the bell if that's your sort of thing, but I won't pressure you to do so. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. So I was talking to someone at the Pluralsight Author Summit, and they said, I feel like you're talking directly to me when I'm listening to your trainings. And I'm like, well, I try to keep it very personal, and I do it by putting Space Ghost behind my microphone or camera, and I talk to him, and I tell him all about the amazing things that Terraform and Vault can do. And let me tell you, this guy here knows a heck of a lot about Terraform and Vault. So if you need a consultant that, that that's for hire, you can hire Space Ghost. Uh, he doesn't come cheap but uh, he's definitely available for gigs. So reach out uh, on Twitter. Let me know. Maybe I'll send you Space Ghost. All right, bye now.